Get ready for China's economic recovery to really gain momentum in the second half of the year. BizBeat, the insight you need. I'm Michael Wong. China's top leadership, the Political Bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, has held a meeting. The meeting analyzed the country's current economic situation and laid out a roadmap to guide economic work for the remainder of the year. Now, I believe the details, language, and tone of this meeting offered a strong and clear pro-growth signal by China's top policymakers. There was a similar high-level meeting on economic work in April this year, but here's what stood out to me in the July meeting. First is the strong emphasis on boosting domestic demand. In the meeting, policymakers identified insufficient domestic demand as one of the main reasons for pressuring the Chinese economy. It called for the active expansion of domestic demand, better unleashing consumption's potential in driving economic growth, and to spur consumption by increasing incomes. That language is much more robust than what was said about domestic demand in April. The meeting signaled more demand-side support policies ahead. Before, China tilted a bit more toward supply-side policies. The emphasis on demand is crucial, as final consumption contributed to 77.2 percent of economic growth in the first half of the year. Second is the jobs imperative. China has already prioritized employment with a series of concrete measures, but this meeting elevated the need to stabilize employment to a level of new strategic importance. Imagine you're graduating almost the entire population of Belgium each year. It's a complex task for any country to pair high-quality jobs for so many new grads. Nearly 11.6 million university graduates are entering the labor market this year. China's policymakers are working hand in hand with the private sector in an all-out effort to support the country's youth in their job search endeavors. For example, China's Ministry of Human Resources and Social Security last month kicked off a 100-day campaign to provide more than 10 million job opportunities for new grads by matching, in a targeted way, labor supply with demand. Third, energizing small businesses. The meeting called for vigorously supporting micro, small, and medium-sized companies. We can also expect concrete policies on measures to promote private investment. Now, SMEs account for 60 percent of China's GDP and provide 80 percent of all urban jobs. At the beginning of the year, China had already unveiled a series of 15 measures to support smaller companies. This additional signal of support will further impel local governments to find ways to bolster this critical productive force in the Chinese economy. The language on a proactive fiscal policy and prudent monetary policy has remained consistent. However, the meeting called for strengthening countercyclical policies. Now that could mean a potential cut to the amount of money commercial banks need to hold as reserves, or another cut in benchmark interest rates in the second half of the year. You see people calling for stronger stimulus measures from the Chinese government. They argue that current efforts are insufficient, but I don't see it this way. The IMF forecasts global growth will be around 3% this year, with the U.S. growing less than 2%, and the euro area less than 1%. China's economy grew five and a half percent in the first half of the year and is on track to meet its around five percent growth target. The recovery momentum is solid enough for policymakers not to engage in a massive flood of stimulus with potentially harmful side effects down the road. After all, China is now focused on long-term, high-quality growth and not short-term stimulus at all costs.